Hey guys, uh, my name is Joshua Java here, and uh, today I'm going to give a quick graphics overview. Uh, for those of you interested in Unreal Development Kit tutorials, um, probably, for, you know, I would say for most people, um, you probably don't need to watch this. But for those for those of you who really don't have a basic understanding of graphics, this might be a good thing to watch before you dive into the editor. So we're going to talk about uh, today the goal of graphics. Um, what pixels are, uh, how we represent color, uh, what buffers are, frame buffers and Z buffers, and how it plays a part with memory. And we'll finish with frame rate. And again, these are all basic concepts that are not really going to go into much detail at all, but just to give you an understanding. And I will, you know, mention a few of these terms uh, in my tutorials and just make the assumption that you understand what's going on. So uh, again, the reason why we want to learn about this stuff is because of performance and <clears throat> excuse me we understand that um, you know creating game media is not necessarily something that's just an artistic endeavor it's as much of an artistic endeavor as it is uh, a technical concern so our goal of graphics um, is basically to output information that the user can easily comprehend and the way that we typically do this is visually uh, when we talk about computer games, we have a few output methods, but typically we're talking about um, a screen or a computer screen or a television, but they all work the same way. Um, so um, we're going to talk about pixels. Um, you guys probably already know this, but pixels are the smallest elements in a raster image. Um, they're kind of the building blocks to what makes an image an image. And when you put thousands of pixels together, it gives the appearance of form and shape and it gives you you know something that you would recognize. Uh, these pixels are typically arranged in a two dimensional array and each pixel has um, typically three or four components but usually three when we talk about graphics that rep that uh, determine what uh, value or color each pixel is. So um, if you wanted to think of it as a uh, coordinate system um, each pixel would have a sort of a location or a coordinate and in that coordinate you would also have information on the color of the pixel and really it's that simple uh, when we talk about um, 2D pixel representation. So pixels are represented um, again like I said with three uh, components and uh, those three components are the red, green, and blue components and we call this system uh, this component system, the RGB color space scheme. Um, each color, red, green, and blue, is given 8 bits, uh, which allows for 2 to the 8th, or 256 values each. I apologize, I should say 2 to the 8th, not uh, 28. Uh, so each color has 256 basically gradations, so 256 variations of the color red, the color green, and the color blue. You also have every value in between them, which kind of allows for a lot of co uh, color combinations. Uh, in fact, uh, over 16 million color combinations. And this is the current standard when we talk about um, color representation in graphics. Um, we also have another scheme. It's actually not a, a different scheme or method of representing color. It's, it's just um, another scheme that actually adds an extra channel. It's called the RGBA color space scheme and it's 32 bits and adds an 8-bit alpha channel and usually the alpha channel is used to represent transparency um, uh, and like I said it's not any different in how you represent the information so it actually just allows you um, some extra information and that's useful um, uh, later and we'll talk about that. So we're going to talk about buffers real quick and how it relates to memory, uh, particularly the frame buffer and the Z buffer. So a frame buffer is a block of memory that holds the contents of what is to be displayed onto the screen. Like I said, we're sequentially rendering frame after frame after frame, and uh, what the frame buffer does is it stores um, what what is going to be displayed next on the frame. Uh, it's it's basically a giant array of pixel locations and pixel values and it sends it to the screen after that. So uh, each pixel in the frame will typically have three values corresponding to the RGB values that make up the colors of the pixel. And uh, just to 
you know, quick note, uh, back in the day when we didn't necessarily have dedicated video cards, the CPU had to handle the frame buffer. But now that we have dedicated video cards, um, we save millions of CPU cycles by calculating the frame buffer in, uh, in these dedicated uh, graphics cards. Uh, Z-buffer is uh, sort of another behind the scenes, scenes layer of pixels that determines the depth of the scene based on the uh, camera point. So what I mean by that is it's sort of what handles um, how you draw objects in front of other objects in the right order. Um, a common uh, error that you'll see that's related to the Z-buffer is what's called Z-fighting or depth fighting. And this refers to the geometry that doesn't know where to render because it's so close to other geometry that the Z-buffer can't distinguish um, any noticeable distance and depth. So a lot of times you'll see flickering on maybe on a decal on the ground. Um, the decal is so close to the ground that it doesn't know um, which to render first so maybe it'll render uh, the decal one frame on top of the floor and then sometimes it'll render the floor uh, on other frames. So that's what's referred to as Z fighting. And the way that you can get around that is to either increase the distance between the two objects or have a much higher accuracy in the Z buffer. So why do we care about this stuff? Um, well, it's obviously the frame rate. I mean, uh, a good gaming experience is gonna be an experience that runs smoothly or it, uh, appears to run smoothly. So many games are actually capped at about 24 or 30 frames per second. Uh, and um, you'll actually notice that uh, the computing time, the time for this, the computer to calculate everything on the screen and put it into the frame buffer and render it is actually inversely proportional to the frame rate. So the higher the computing time, the more information on the screen, the more polygons, the more material or complicated shaders and visual effects, um, that's gonna lead to a lower frame rate. And um, when you're talking about working on a, a PC platform, it's something that's really, really important to consider because everybody has a different configuration. Not everybody has the top of the line machine, so you really have to take into a lot of considerations. Um, and that's really kind of one of the biggest challenging challenges in game design is um, benchmarking for those different configurations. So. Uh, typically we want a minimum of about 24 frames per second on a middle uh, wear machine uh, to avoid noticeable choppiness and a uh, fun little fact is that actually humans can only perceive about a maximum of 60 to 70 frames per second anything more and you can actually have uh, sort of um, like a like a bell curve or a point of diminishing returns I should say where you get undesirable results so I, I don't know if you've ever seen maybe a helicopter when it's spinning its rotors so fast that it almost looks like it's spinning backwards if you've noticed so that can actually be directly applied in games and so yeah 60 to 70 frames per second is about as high as you'd ever want to go but you know what if if you have that many frames and you're, you're you really don't have a lot to worry about so yeah that's it thank you for watching um, please feel free to email me or to get in contact with me on Twitter uh, always great to make new friends and uh, please uh, send me any feedback you have. Thanks a lot.